Hey, welcome to Right Machining. I've got a good one for you today, and we're gonna be making the slurry for lost foam casting. It's a relatively simple process. As you can see, I have a bunch of projects that are kind of lined up here, and I've run out of the slurry that I made before. Now, before you start getting worried about how to make the slurry, it's really, really simple, as long as you follow a few steps. Okay? Let's just get these projects out of the way, and I'll show you how to do it. This is a drywall compound that I was using before for all of my other casting videos. You should check them out. And in the new up and coming videos, I'm gonna use this stuff here. Now, uh, now, I had a recent flood because the hot water tank popped in my house and the box got a little bit damaged. I got the whole basement dried out here and I'm almost back to normal with getting the woodworking room set up. We're just gonna need a couple things. We're gonna need a paint mixer and we're gonna need a pail to store this in because we don't want to dry it out and going bad or getting lumpy. And it's got to have a good actual mechanical seal on it, like this pail here, or you're going to have problems later with the drying out around the rim. Let's just lay some plastic out here because it can get a little bit messy at times. Now, I don't know the exact ratio that I'm going to be doing today, but I'm just going to kind of be going by feel. We want a thinner consistency because, because this would be a little bit too thick to actually pour over top of the material. Let's throw some of it in the pail here. And remember, if you put too much water in later, you want to save some of this so you can actually kind of thicken it up again. To start with, I'm just going to throw this in here and just kind of give you an idea how thick it is when I go to mix it. So this pail is a 19 liter pail and there's probably just a little bit more than half full of drywall compound in here. So I'm guessing that's 10 liters of compound. And then this jug here is a four liter jug of water. Now, if you watch as I'm mixing this, you're going to see the viscosity change. And that's what we're going for. The ideal viscosity that we're going for here is not enough viscosity for it to actually support its own weight and it kind of blends back in just like paint would into a pail kind of like a heavy trim clad and if you get a little bit carried away like i do sometimes with mixing stuff and you go a little bit too far and you didn't save any of the drywall compound it just means a little bit later on you're going to have to maybe do two or three coats of this to build up that base but the key is to make sure that this is super duper dry check out the viscosity as i pull it out of the pail See how it kind of stood there on its own and held its own shape? We're going for a little bit thinner than this. And remember the key to everything is to make sure that you don't have any junk or chunks or anything in here. Shit. Now I've made a really big mess of that, but the solution is really simple. You just grab a sheet of paper and then level it out on the top and then just slowly pull it off much like this. And it should grab all of the junk that's sitting on top. Now I gave a quick inspection of the old stuff and there was no chunks. So let's dump it in with the other stuff and then we'll mix it all in together and have a look. In review, we got exactly what we're looking for. We've got the consistency that we're looking for. It's super pourable. It's not holding its shape on top, but there's two drawbacks that we learned today is we entrained a lot of air in there because of that little whirlpool on the top. It actually sucked air down into the bottom and then now it's all trapped in there. But we're just gonna let it sit for two or three days before we actually cover our parts with it. And the other thing I learned, the old Makita drill, <laughs> I mean, it's a good drill, but the consistency of this was pretty thick for it and smoke was coming off that drill while I was mixing it. I think in hindsight, next time, I've got a big Makita drill, like a plug into the wall type. I'm gonna use that one there. That's probably gonna be a little bit better for so it. So since you like this video, I've got some other casting videos that are popping up here. Check the casting videos out. It'll actually do a lot of follow through with all of this mixing. And then we'll actually get some final products out there that you're going to see and enjoy. We'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> Thank you, Terry.